why, if there are so many responsible pet owners, do we have so many animals with behavioral problems who then either wind up having a really truncated life because, for example, they're not socialized, so they can't go out in public, or they're bad, so they go back to the shelter. We have these standards and we assume they must be right, they must be sort of universal, and, and then we extend them to other species. So defecating outside the litter box we see as misbehaving. Calling animals spiteful, to me, is a cry for uh, education. Instead of taking on that responsibility yourself and saying, I own it, it's my fault, you put it on someone else, but isn't that human nature? Most of the studies that have tried to pin that down and have tried to identify whether the animal's actually spiteful or actually guilty have come up negative. Dogs who destroy when, you're, when you've left them alone, they're not doing this out of spite. They're doing this because they're distressed. Your presence, entrance, arrival equaled punishment. And so that's why they say dogs get guilty looks when people come home. That's because you helped him create the wrong association. Acting out of spite is one of those things that goes with the dominance, you know, because it's all about you. It's not about the dog. How you approach behavior is an ethical stance. Look at, uh, what's his name? The little tough guy. Caesar Milan? Yeah. I mean, for him, it's all the fact that he's a little guy and he, he dominates. People just think they gotta force uh, dogs to exert dominance over them. That's rubbish. And I have to tell you that in the evolutionary literature, alpha was just a shorthand for breeding. I'm the alpha that you feel you have to compete with a dog in your household over some imaginary rank. What does that say for how you live with people? Yes, there are hierarchies, but no, they're not dominance hierarchies in the way we think of dominance. But that's quite different from the assertion that animals are somehow predestined to want to strive for a higher rank in a hierarchy. That's where the concept of dominance goes wrong. So dominance doesn't mean that it's an active fight or even a threat. And they can just sort of settle conflicts peacefully by, you know, gestures rather than teeth and claws. There's a real, real, real mistake in the way this, these terms have been used. And the implications have damaged dogs, tremendously damaged dogs. My opinion is that it became very, very catchy with the beginning of The Dog Whisperer on TV. We use your He's a Caesar Milan trainer. So pack leadership training is what we use. I used to train horses and it's the same kind of. And for a while there, about five years ago, I was almost starting every consultation with a pet owner, having to go through how they needed to stop thinking those things. Do you ever watch Caesar Milan? A lot of people don't like him, or they don't like how tough they are in the dogs. But if you think about the wild, you know, people, people are real emotional. They want to put emotional attachments on dogs. You see crazy things. People will uh, suddenly flip their dog onto its back and go through these strange ritualized behaviors that they think represents some kind of uh, reenactment of what wolves are imagined to do in the wild, and it's all nonsense. Well, so guess what? Sometimes they have to take an angry cool pit bull and slam it against the wall and say, look, I ain't washed, you're not washed. This kind of uh, vicious cycle gets stoked by the media who say, well, you've got to be the pack leader, you've got to be the pack leader. And that just makes everything worse. And then it gets to the point where the owner says, I cannot deal with this animal anymore. And the animal goes, is out of the house. While you're a member of their social group, you're not a dog and they're not a human. Once again, I think it comes from a, a major misunderstanding of the social dynamics of wolf packs. So a lot of the time, I'll get owners who don't want to do it. They thought they were doing what they had to do, and they feel very, very guilty about the fact that they feel like someone misled them. Mark Durr provided insight into Caesar Milan's misunderstanding of dominance. He quoted Milan as saying that a woman is the only species that is wired different than the rest, and that a man applies discipline, then affection. So we're more psychological than emotional, 
According to Milan, all animals follow dominant leaders. They don't follow lovable leaders. It's more of a reflection of a societal attitude um, than anything else. When I had my son, you know, I was a 260-pound weightlifter with a PhD. And if I couldn't manage the kid without hitting him and intimidating him, something was seriously wrong. We're much more impressed by charismatic media figures than we are by scientists who are very thoughtful and very methodical. And I think people think, oh, that's boring. I want to listen to this you know, charismatic guy on TV who tells me how to do it. And that's what happened with the dog training. And somehow, um, instead of entering into a partnership with a dog, the misuse of the dominance concept made this an adversarial relationship. For some reason, humans seem to be much more hooked on this notion of social dominance than the animals are. You know, I used to say to people, if you think you really need to dominate an animal, go home and try to dominate your cat. And after they've sewn you back together again, you know, we'll talk. You can use force methods and you may get the results you want and they might work quickly at first. Okay, so force methods are going to be shock, choke, pinch, holding dogs down, th things that I would not do ever, period. Okay, we're going to put those in the never do column. But your relationship with the animal will be impacted by that. So that animal, chances are, will never trust you again. It will always view you as a threat rather than as a social partner. If you use force, if you use abuse, it could be um, profound verbal punishment, it could be physical punishment, it could be harsh restraint techniques, dominance downs, alpha rolls, electric shock, smacking a dog, popping them under the chin. If you do those types of things, not only are you at greater risk for being injured yourself, but what you tend to get is a dog who stops offering behaviors. That's the key, is that the science is mounting, and it's already mounted, there's a mountain of studies that show us that positive reinforcement training works better than force training, that you are more likely to be bitten if you use the methods of the trainers that are quite popular on television, not all trainers, because some are good, but the ones that use the methods of choking and holding down, you actually statistically are more likely to be bitten by your dog, which means what? Your dog's gonna be more likely to be euthanized. And you're looking for a trainer for positive reinforcement because there's just no reason you should teach a puppy how to sit using a shock collar. With shock, you have a high probability of increasing fear and aggression. I mean, it's high, and there's so much science behind this and studies published that, that it's just unequivocally true. Not to mention the fact that when you do use those aversives, you will start to have other behavior problems because if an animal is only doing something out of fear, you end up with a fearful animal and out of fear comes defensive aggression because if they feel like they can't get away from something, they use the strategies that they have. And then you've got a fearfully aggressive animal. If your trainer is still using pinch collars and choke collars, they haven't read a book or gone to a scientifically based seminar in 25 years. We focus on connecting the pet parent with the pet and teaching them how to reinforce the positive behaviors that they want so that the pet becomes a, um, a good citizen within the family and a, uh, a valued family member. You know, pets are members of our family, so it, if it's safe for them. Three is for what? A poodle? And I'm 140 pounds. You know, we, we talk about dog training. I think it's actually really people training. Oh! Jesus! It shot right through my frigging body. What does it say on the thing for what a five is? Ow! Oh! Shoo! It shouldn't be returned anywhere. There's a boost for what? To kill your dog?